freestyling. Welcome to the Fish Corner, everybody. Like I said, if you're new to the channel, my name is Cleveland. This is the Fish Corner. This is my fish room. And before we get started, do a couple things for me. One, hit the subscribe button. Two, hit the notification bell. And matter of fact, three, make sure you like that video. It's going to be a good one. Now, it's been a minute since I've done a fish room tour. So uh, since I've been busy getting things done, let's go ahead and do a fish room tour of this fish room. Now, let's start off with the tanks you can see in the in the picture right now we got a 60 gallon matter of fact we got a 55 gallon right here this is a freshwater fish tank we have in here a zebrina pike that we got from predatory fins we got he's scared because the light is on i don't even usually have a light on but he's looking all scary then right here we have a super red texas now that is a beautiful beautiful fish all right down below we have some Dovi Feste hybrids, a bunch of different sizes. I think I'm going to move all of these guys into the 800 gallon pond. But uh, then right here, we have our supposed to be freshwater line fish. We got the air quotes with that because it's actually a brackish water fish, brackish to marine. So even when you see these fish in a fish store, and they're saying that they're freshwater. Trust and believe you cannot keep them long term. Long fish tank they have to be brackish. That means the salinity level point zero one zero one point zero one five, something like that. Right here we have a twenty gallon empty quarantine tank, introduction tank, all that good stuff. Over here we have a thirty seven gallon saltwater aquarium. We have in here a snowflake clownfish, and then we have down below a snowflake eel, and then we have some struggling corals in there. They're struggling because this fish room gets very hot. These, this summer has been a very hot summer. I mean, the temperature has been like 110, 112, even one day. We, we're constantly getting hot temps in this fish room. So the corals don't really like that. So that's why they're looking like that overall. Aquarium, it is what it is. The OGs, y'all know what's up. They're gonna do what they're gonna do. Still got these two inhabitants happy about that. Moving on over to this 125 gallon aquarium over here. This is a saltwater aquarium. I have it sectioned off because I have a very aggressive blue line grouper on this side. Matter of fact, he's right there in the back. And, uh, then on this side, we have a striped puffer fish. And if you notice his tail, that's what the blue line grouper did to him. So I put up the divider. I don't want to run the risk of anything else happening to this guy. Um, I'm thinking that we're going to end up taking these two guys back to the fish store. I think I want to make this fresh water. And, uh, you know, you'll see why in a moment. Oh, geez, y'all might know if y'all don't know. Come on over. I'll tell you why right now. So this is the 800 gallon pond. I got to cut the light on. But uh, let's go ahead and stop right here at the 200. Right here, we got the 240 gallon freshwater aquarium over here. We have in here Golden Jack Dempsey right there. We got a red tiger motor glance. That's a female. We got a jaguar cichlid right there. We have a red dovi right here. We got another red dovi in here as well. Tucked off right there. We got the golden giant garami. We got the starry night Madagascar cichlid. We have a Mississippi map turtle in here. Pardon the reflection. And uh, we also have in here our true red tear female feste. Now, that is the mother to those hybrids over there. Now, she is in here because uh, she was an 800 gallon pine and uh, she was getting picked on. Really, just, you know, if I wouldn't have taken her out, we probably wouldn't have her now. So that's where she's at, hiding behind those rocks. Down below, we have a 40 gallon tank. We have in here electric blue Jack Dempsey. 
and uh, we have in here a puffer fish that uh, just can't seem to eat enough. There's Electric Blue Jack Dempsey right there. Now, hopefully you make it. I've, uh, I've struck out every time with keeping those guys over here. We got the 60 gallon long. Of course, right here, you can notice or you'll notice we have the Oscar cichlid right there. We have in here a couple of those bichers. We have an albino bicher right there in the back. We also have a Delhazy. We have right here, I don't know if you can see his, you see his mug right there. That is a rainbow wolfish. So, um, nice to hide out. We also have in here a wood cat. And uh, pretty much, that's it. That's what we got in that tank. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this 225. But first, let me cut the light on to the pond. 225. Sorry, bet. You probably was thinking about this 225 over here. The African cichlids. Yeah, that's right. All right, y'all. So over here, we have a 225-gallon saltwater aquarium. We have the horn shark in here. We have in here the lionfish. Oh, yeah, extra large lionfish. We have in here a tessellata eel. We have over here the panther grouper. We have over here the Cortez stingray. And we are going to be up to this aquarium. So, currently a 225 gallon aquarium. That stand over here is the other side of what will be a plywood aquarium. So the stand right here, we just, I just finished building that a little while ago. So I'm going to move the 225 over to this stand. And when I do, then I'll build this out. I'm going to build a 12 foot by four foot by three and a half foot aquarium. Roughly give us, give us about 300 gallons, I mean 1300 gallons. So, um, you know, these, are, these guys are going to go in there. Um, Blue Line Grouper was in here, and he was trying to pick on the horn shark. I mentioned before I, uh, I got this panther grouper bigger, he was picking on him too. So, you know, he's, he's a bit of a bully. He's a bit of a bully. So, what are you doing? You hungry? I think he is hungry. So, we'll probably have to feed him. I don't think we're going to do this in, this in a video. But if you do want to see feeding videos of this aquarium, make sure you are watching the shorts. So yeah, so and then as far as the puffer fish, cannot put puffer fish in an aquarium with the eels or especially the stingray. So that's why more than likely I have to have to get them up out of here and we'll figure it out. Uh, Wait, your thing is red. So yeah, so that's the reason why I'm considering getting rid of the blue line grouper as well as the purple fish. Don't really have nowhere to put them. Once I move these fish up out of here, this is going to this is going to turn into a freshwater aquarium. So um, stay tuned. If you want to see that build, want to see that massive build right here, make sure you stay tuned for that. Um, then this is going to go to the second fish room. This right here, this 800 gallon pond is going to come out. This is about 10 foot right there already. So it's probably going to come out about another two foot. I want to get in 12 foot as well. So to about right there. That is where we're going to have. Okay, I got you. Okay. Yeah. So this is going to be a 12 foot by eight foot by probably maybe like five foot tall, four foot tall. Um, depends on whether or not we put, you know, glass panels so you could actually see inside of the, uh, the aquarium from the side. Now, we got to wrap this up. Carter need a diaper change. So we have down below, we have the 75 gallon Goliath Tigerfish Aquarium. Now, we want to upgrade him to the 180. 
But right now, he is doing absolutely amazing in a 75-gallon. He's by himself. He's such a joy to keep, such a pleasure to feed, and overall one of the coolest fish that I've ever owned. Up top, we have a discus aquarium. We have a bunch of different discs in here, but uh, this is our favorite. That's ice right there. Now, let's get on over to the 225. Over here, we have the 225-gallon African cichlid tank. Now, I'm going to give you a little side view. Give you a little side view action right here. We got some frontosa. We got the regular big frontosa, black widow frontosa in here. We got a bunch of peacocks, the OBs. We have in here the eye biter. We have in here the Malawi barracuda. This is quite the amazing aquarium. And as you can see, let me just... Come on now, so you can see that this thing is actually very large. But, you know, every time I come to this side, they come to this side. But yeah, so they got a lot of room to grow into this aquarium. But look at the front toaster. Oh, geez, what's up? Y'all see how big the Black Widow front toaster are getting? Definitely getting some size on them. Yeah, look at the eye biter. Now that is a male eye biter right there. And then like I said, the Malawi Barracuda. Way down there on that end. The yo-yo loaches have gotten pretty big as well. I mean, look at them. Come on, there we go. All right, then lastly, y'all, lastly. Bobby Lastly right here. We got the 800 gallon pine, y'all. Now, I wanted this thing to be as natural as possible. OGs already know. Got a bunch of plants in here. Got this thing scape like as if it was an aquarium, but also having the plants as if it was a pond, right? So, that's a lot of natural filtration. So, in here, we have the Hepsidus Odo African Pike. That's what's in view right there. Right below them is a tiger shovel nose. You just seen two of my red Atabapo pikes. I have in here two very large male buddy cough riders. Where is he? Where's one right there? And then the other one is somewhere else in here. We got Kobe, our large silver arowana. We got the giant red tail garami. There, there go both the um, buddy claw fry. We got, I think I could do it better because I'm taller. And we got the red devil managuins hybrid right there in view. We got the clown knife, 16 inch clown knife. We got a bunch of different Midas cichlids in here, about four of those. And uh, what else we got in here? I got one of the largest. Dovi Feste hybrids in here as well. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's pretty much it. So, yeah, water's crystal clear as always. Fish are doing great. So, as you can see, this is the reason why, especially him right there, is the reason why I want to upgrade this to a Nice 3,000 gallons, something like that. I'll do the measurements and we'll figure it out. Like I said, if I got side view panels, then I could go five foot. If I don't, then I'll probably go four foot. That stand right there is four foot. You know what I mean? So um, I could actually just have it be walled off and still be four foot. And no, we're not going to be able to get the side view. But guess what? My 32 inch silver arowana don't have drop eye. You know why? Bless you, babe. You know why? Because when I feed him, I feed him from the top. So he doesn't that. He never has to look at the side. Not really concerned with the bottom. Meanwhile, my albino silver does have drop eye on one eye. So that's just my theory. I've had plenty of air in the past. 
and they always had drop out. They always was in uh, aquariums and things like that. But, you know, this guy right here, his eyes are perfect. And the only difference between him and any of the other ones I've ever had was that they were in aquariums. So I think it's something about him knowing that the food is coming from the top. You know what I mean? At least that's my theory. I don't know if I'm going to change it. Like I said, uh, check out the waterfalls. Pretty cool. I got this thing uh, being ran off of a trash can sump right back there in that corner. DIY. Let me show you a couple of DIY filters that I got. Two trash can sumps on this 225. That's going to be enough for the whole 1,300 gallon. Plan to head, y'all. Plan to head. Above the tank sump over here. Above the tank sump over there. A little aquaponics right here. Get you some natural filtration when you can put plants in your aquariums because you got fish that's going to tear it up. You could always run. A little aquaponics like that. You could always run a little butter tank sump, throw some plants in there. We got lava rock in there, right? Almost like a bog, right? And then, of course, another above the tank sump over there. Yeah. And even on this one, I do got the down below sump right there as well. But uh, this right here was me planting ahead. I knew what I was going to do. Make sure if you ever set up a fish room that you take in consideration the drain lines. You want to make sure that you plan ahead. Water in. You want to make sure that you're planning ahead. I'll show you how I'll, I'll show you how I add water to my aquariums. You're going to need you a dehumidifier, portable AC unit. That's my manifold for my water in, all the different freshwater aquariums. That's my manifold for my RODI. That's our RODI filter system. That's the, that's the game changer. All of my, all of the aquariums that I have drain lines plumbed into them, drains right there. This is the line for the dehumidifier. So it's constantly flowing and draining right there. So I never have to empty it. Get your refrigerator. In this refrigerator, I got a bunch of worms. The worms, I'm breeding the worms for the fish. So uh, plan ahead. Think about all that. Think about what you're going to do. Think about what you want to feed your fish. Um, this is my reservoir for my salt water. Pre-mix it, pre-make it. Sits right there. Throw a circulation pump in there so the water circulates. Use it when I need it. So yeah, think about all that. And then again, another trash can sump for the 125. If you're curious about how I've done any of these things, there's videos I've already posted online. You should definitely check them out. You won't regret it. Now, let's wrap up this video. Alright y'all, so I hope that you enjoyed this video. hope that you learned something. hope that you're inspired by something. And like I've said numerous times already, if you're new to the channel, do a couple of things for me. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell like the video and everybody make sure to do something for me if you like the video like the damn video peace